Hi, my name is Dale Maley. Little background on this project and myself. I like to build hand cranked wood models. I've now built over 50 of these hand cranked models. I often take them to public and family events and children and the adults both love to play with these models. I have designed and built about every type of wood gear that I know of and that's a long list including spur gears, worm gears, the angled teeth for spur gears that made up with worm gears, rack and pinion gears, bevel gears, peg gears, and gear type sprockets for wood chain drives. And if you're interested you can check out my other YouTube videos. Many of my models use some of these concepts. Now the one type of wood gear that I've not built is a planetary gear set. And there's a picture of a common planetary set shown here. A planetary gear set has three sets of gears. The sun gear is the very center gear. Around it go three planet gears and then encapsulating those three gears the outer one is called a ring gear. And of course you need some type of carrier to carry the three planet gears. So I decided to build a wood model which would have two sets of the planetary gears. And then to, for both of those to package inside the uh, envelope I typically use for my larger wood models, I came up with these sizes. The center sun gear would have a 4 inch pitch diameter with 12 teeth. The three planet gears, they would have a 3 inch pitch diameter with 9 teeth each. Then the outer ring gear would be a 10 inch pitch diameter with 30 teeth. Then on the gear design I chose a 14 and a half degree pressure angle um, the other option is 20 degrees for wood gears, but for this one I picked 14 and a half. Now I use a free program called Gear DXF, which you can Google and find on the internet to design all of my gears. My first planetary set on the model, uh, the sun gear, will be the one to strip the driven gear, and that'll slow down the speed by a factor of three and a half to one. Then on my second planetary set. Instead of driving the sun gear, I'll drive the planet gears and let the sun gear be the output. That one will actually speed up the input speed by a ratio of three and a half to one. So let's take a look in SketchUp, the free drafting program, and see what this design looks like. So here's what my model looks like in the SketchUp drafting program. You can see the two planetary gear sets. You can also see the hand crank on the right. That crank will go back to a set of peg gears and then that transmits the power um, to the back and then I'll have another set more peg gears which will bring the power into the planetary gear sets. On the right hand planetary set that's the one that will be driven have the sun gear driven and the left hand planetary set I'll be driving the planet gears from the back. Now here's a close-up view of that first planetary set on the right hand side of the model. And I decided for the planet gear carrier, first I thought maybe I can get away with just one of those in the back with the shafts coming forwards into the sun, sun gears. But the more I thought about it, why not have a carrier in the back and also one in the front? And then that will make sure everything's lined up well. Um, the pink shaft there, that's actually will be glued to the front carrier and that will be the output shaft. And then you can see behind it that green shaft um, that's driving the sun gear. And it will slip inside the planet carrier, but it uh, will not, it will just slide and won't be glued to it. That keeps everything lined up well. Now here's a back view of that first planetary gear set. And you can see the peg gear, peg gears behind it. And they will drive the sun gear on this model. I added that top red dial up there which helps support the ring gear at the top. The ring gear is supported at the bottom by a curved piece of wood that will be screwed into the base. After I got the first planetary set built, <coughs> I used slow motion video to figure out what's the fastest that it will run. and it would run up to about 120 RPM. 
there's no easy way for me to see how fast if you drive the planet side how fast it'll go so I'm going to make make an assumption it will also run up to 120 rpm so now we got to figure out the overall gear ratios of the whole model so let's start over in the lower right hand corner that's the input that's the hand crank and that can run anywhere from 0 up to 200 rpm that's about the fastest that a child or an adult can crank 200 rpm it'll go back to the first peg gear set which is a 2 to 1 ratio so it'll slow that max 200 rpm down to 100 rpm then the power moves to the left to peg gear set 2 I'll use the same 2 to 1 ratio on that set that'll drop that speed down to 50 rpm and then I'll bring the power into planetary set 1 and it has a 3.5 to 1 decrease ratio so it'll actually slow it down to 14 rpm going back up to the top uh, the third peg gear set I'm going to make that with a 3 to 1 ratio so that decreases that max 200 rpm down to just 33 rpm because planetary set 2 will see a 3.5 to 1 ratio increase in speed on that side now the biggest design challenge I faced on building this first planetary gear set was how to f package the gears inside the ring gear for example if I'm just doing two simple spur gears the theoretical distance between the centers of those gears is half of the pitch diameter of the first gear plus half the pitch diameter of the second gear but if you build this with the two gears it will not work the gears will bind up why is that well there's quite a few errors and tolerances involved for example the run out of the teeth back to the center axle or errors in the teeth profiles themselves so in the past when I'm doing spur gears I make the two gears up first I'll get a piece of scrap wood I'll drill a couple of three-quarter inch diameter holes which are for the axles then I'll vary that distance between the gears until I get them to run smoothly and what I find is on the smaller gears I have to add a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch to that theoretical center distance between the gears if it's a much larger gear I might have to go clear up the add three sixteenths of an inch to that theoretical distance now here's a photo of a past project of mine where I actually had five spur gears all driven together and you can see my piece of scrap wood underneath the gears and I drilled holes on them for the shafts and what I found out on this project was uh, adding a sixteenth of an inch between a the theoretical distance between gear centers actually worked much better than if I increased it and added an eighth of an inch so I can't use my old practice of just playing around and adding some distance between the gear centers because everything has to fit inside the outer ring gear so how can I do this project and make sure the three sets of gears all mesh correctly so the approach that I came up with was start out with the center red sun gear and make that a little bit smaller like 97 percent of full size and go ahead and make the three planet gears at hundred percent of full size so this gives some clearance between those set those two sets of gears then on that outer ring gear to give it some clearance increase its size to hundred three percent of the nominal size and see what happens so I made the five gears and I put them assembled them all together and tried it out unfortunately I failed what I found was the sun gear and the planet gears were too tight they were binding up so I went back and I reduced that sun gear size to 94 percent of normal size and made a new sun gear put it all together and it and it works pretty well I had to do quite a bit of hand grinding on the gear teeth but I was able to get it to work another design challenge I faced on this project was through the years I've learned the scroll saw does not really work very well when you try to cut three quarter inch thick oak gears the blade has too much drift in it and you end up with teeth that are not straight and they won't mesh well with other gears what I found is the bandsaw does a much better job of cutting the spur gears but how can I cut a ring gear with a bandsaw 
So here's the process I came up with to make the ring gear. First I made a segmented ring out of red oak, which is shown in the photo here. I sawed it out and glued it up. Then I printed out the paper pattern for the ring gear from SketchUp. Then I sawed that segmented blank in half. I clamped those two halves together temporarily and then I was able to put the two halves of the paper pattern on top and glue them on and then I band sawed each half of the segmented ring and when I got that done I glued the two halves back together and had a ring gear. Now we're almost ready to watch a video of the first planetary gear set in action but let's talk about one more design challenge before we watch the video. Now the last major design challenge was how do you position that ring gear in the right location so it mates well with the three planet gears. So what I did, I went ahead and made the piece of wood on the bottom that's going to hold it, but I just used two um, black clamps here so I can move it around until I got a good fit. Once I got a good fit, I took the ring gear and its mating piece on the bottom off still clamped together and then I dialed them together so they wouldn't move. Then I used two wood screws to hold them together. Now let's watch a video of this first planetary set in action. Now I was pretty impressed that I got it to run this well in the dry condition. And by dry I mean this is all bare wood on wood. What I will eventually do is coat all the gear teeth with Johnson's wax. That's the lubricant that I use in all my wood models and that should make it run even smoother after I apply the, apply the Johnson's wax. So what lessons did I learn building this first planetary set that I could apply to building the second set? Well my solution that worked to get the gears to fit together was making the sun gear 94 percent size, the planet gears at 100 percent size, and the big rain gear at 103 percent of nominal size. On this second set I'm going to try using a 20 degree pressure angle instead of the 14.5 degree I used on this model. I think that might um, result in me having to do less uh, hand dremeling of the teeth to get it to work well. But overall the design worked pretty great. And the, the, using the two planet carriers, one in front and one in back, that worked really well. And I also used some extra, extra thickness on the carriers to help better guide the shafts for the gears. And what I found is, uh, it's called L over D ratio, the length to diameter. So let's say you've got a 3 8 diameter shaft. Um, that, that'll be guided pretty well if the thickness of the bearing is twice that or 3 quarters of an inch. Which also means if you're using three quarter inch diameter dowels or shafts like I am, then you'd like it the bearing to be twice that uh, width or one and a half inches. Just a lesson I've learned through the years. So some closing thoughts on this project. The biggest challenge was figuring out how to size all the gears so they all run well with each other. I'm very excited to go to now go build planetary set number two and finish the model. So in summary this short video explains how to uh, build, design and build a wooden planetary gear set. Hopefully this video helps you on your projects and gives you some ideas. I hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe. Thank you.